Hello everyone. So this time I thought we might do a little something different because we're going to talk about something other than chemistry. In fact, this is the first time in my 20 years as an educator that I've done a lecture that wasn't about chemistry. And hopefully it will be one of the last times I ever have to do this. But this is unique and difficult, challenging time that we're in, so we adapt. So here we go. Register to vote. Holy shit. Vote like your life depends on it, but you can't do that unless you've registered. So, let's talk about that. Because of the pandemic, Governor Murphy signed legislation to let us register to vote online and vote by mail. Everyone. So, if you are a citizen, you're a resident of New Jersey, you can register to vote online. This is what it looks like. Link will be in the description for this video. Do it. You have another week and a half to do it. The deadline is 21 days before the election, so I believe you have until next Tuesday. So you have eight days. So, relatively simple. Here's what the page looks like once you click on it. You need your driver's license, you need your social security number. It takes less than five minutes to fill this out. Basically, it's your ID, your social security number, and your address, and then they have to verify all that, which is why they need your driver's license and your social security number. Very simple to do. Okay, so you've done that, or you've done it somewhere in the past. Here's what you get. You get the official ballot. Now, yours may be slightly different. I don't live in Bergen County, so mine has the Sussex County Division stuff on it. But otherwise, it looks just like this. Official election mail. Um, it's mailed out. I don't know why it has New Brunswick on it. That must be where the the, the permit done, permit's done. All your details are here. I blacked them out because you're not me. You don't need my voting information. Um, and it says on it, official mail-in ballot. It's illegal for anyone to actually mess with it. So, comes with instructions. For once in your life, once in my life, read the damn things. It's important. If you do this wrong, your vote gets rejected. You don't have a voice. So, Read through it before you touch the ballot itself. Read the instructions. One, you can get, you, you're allowed to vote by mail if, you have, if you're a registered voter. You didn't have to request a, a vote by mail ballot. It's automatic for this election because of the pandemic. Um, so, yours may look slightly different because, again, this is Sussex County, but basically it's going to have the same instructions. Um, I even saw your freeholders film the video on how to do this, so I'll put a link for that up as well. Um, it is the envelope that comes with its postage paid, so you got to do is throw it back in the mail. You can also drop them off. All that stuff is on the back. So here's how to fill it out. Number two pencil or a blue or black pen. It's a Scantron sheet, just like the ones you use for exams or the SAT if you're as old as I am. Um, if you screw up your ballot, you can get a replacement. You have to talk to your county clerk to do it, but it's not that hard to do. The point is, this is democracy. They're supposed to make it reasonable for you to participate in it. So, um, you have to sign a certificate that the en in the end out the outer envelope. Let me say that again. Your ballot goes into an inner envelope that is signed, and an outer envelope that is postmarked, and it goes. So it has a certificate on it. I'll show you that in a moment. Specifically, turning it back in. You've got four options. One, you can mail it. Um, up to you if you want to trust the post office at this point. Um, I haven't seen great delays in my mail, but in watching the news, some people have. So uh, it's your call. There are lock boxes outside of a lot of town halls and, and county buildings that you can drop your ballot off. And they're going to be available. They're already there, but I think they're going to be unlocked later this week. Um, you can hand deliver it, which is what I chose to do. I needed to make it ceremonial, plus I wanted to document the whole the whole process so I could do this. And if you want to vote in person, that's not so simple. You can do provisional ballots, but they're not even going to be counted until after all the mail-in ballots are in. So the idea is that we're supposed to be avoiding mail-in voting or you know, avoiding in-person voting. Do so. It's not exactly the safest time to be in crowded polling places right now. If it was, we'd be in a classroom. Most colleges are polling places on election day. Okay, so here's the reply envelope. Prepaid postage, goes to your county board of elections, has all the same stuff on it about it being official election mail, and official mail-in ballot. Um, your stuff will shine through here, the stuff that I blacked out before. If somebody's taking it for you to drop it off, they need to be signing all this stuff. 
Now, this is the actual sealed inner envelope. This is what we'll be showing through that previous one. It has all your voter information on it for the and the barcode on it for them to, to certify that it's the one they sent you specifically. You have to sign it and it has to match your signature. So if you're doing silly things with your signature, your ballot will get rejected. So be careful with that. Uh, you're going to put the ballot in this, seal it up, sign this, and it goes into that outer envelope that I showed you in the previous slide. If you have a problem, again, you can get a replacement. Call the county clerk's office or go there to get a replacement ballot. The idea is you participate in democracy because you can, and they make it reasonable for you to do so. If somebody helps you fill out the ballot, if you have handwriting issues or, or other reasons to need assistance, there's a place for that. If someone helped you do it, they need to sign here. Everything by the book. And this is how you seal it up. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It's basically uh, an 8.5 by 14 sheet of paper. It's longer than a regular sheet of printer paper. And you're filling in little bubbles for what you want. So, black or blue ink, ballpoint pen or number 2 pencil. Um, if you're like me, number 2 pencil is what I grew up with because... Our Scantron machine at school doesn't read ink, and the ones I grew up with didn't read ink either. So I'm used to saying, all right, always use a number two pencil, always use a number two pencil. So go ahead and use a number two pencil. So here's the one. Voting for electors for president. Now, notice it doesn't say you're voting for president because you're not. The president of the United States is not directly elected. If he were, We'd be, we'd be voting for the re-election of President Hillary Clinton right now. So, this is voting for the Electoral College people that then cast the state's electoral votes. That is how the presidential election works. That's not how anything else on the page works. That's just this one. So, but let's be real. This is what this ballot really should look like because this is what it really is. This is the decision. Quite possibly, and in my opinion at least, the most important decision you may ever make. It may literally decide the fate of this country as well as your own life. Um, so please participate. Please take it seriously. There's nothing more serious than this. So the others, House of Representatives, these are up every two years. So they're always running for re-election. That's where you're going to see their signs up almost year round every year. Um, the Senate, one of our senators is up every, well, the Senate is elected every six years, but one of them will be up this year, and then the next one will not be up until either two years from now or four years from now. They're never up at the same time. So then there'll be other stuff. There are three questions, uh, three ballot questions. The first one, legalizing marijuana for recreational use, yes or no? Second one, tax exemption for veterans who didn't go to war. Yes or no? Third one, changing the redistricting schedule for Congress in this state if the census data is late. Census data is how we decide the districts. So if the census is delayed, well, then this needs to be delayed too. But it's still a yes or no question. Okay, so here's my ballots path. I filled all that stuff out, I sealed it up, I took it to my county clerk's office, where the Board of Elections is. So, then when I got there, they made me fill out yet another certification. Not just the ballot, but the delivery had to be certified if you're going to go in person. Now, again, this is Sussex, Bergen may have slightly different procedures, but it should be very similar. I had to certify my name, my address, what town I live in, that I'm actually part of Sussex County. And I had to sign this, and they verified all that information with my driver's license in person. So, everything had to be tight. The reason I'm going through all this with you is because I want you to get the idea, contrary to what you see in the news, specifically coming largely from one person, fraud here is pretty freaking hard. You'd have to have a lot of balls to walk in someplace and try to hand off a fake ballot and also be using a fake driver's license and also have fake the signature, the voter ID, the barcode, and the, you know, it's insane. It's almost impossible to do. And it's a felony on top of that for one vote. It's not widespread. It's almost impossible. Okay. 
Here's what it looks like. Now, I took this picture for me because I do think it's the most important sheet of paper I've ever handed off. I wanted it. I'm going to frame it and put it on my freaking wall. If I still have a wall, if we still have a country after January. Who knows when I'll see an office again, but, you know, still. All right, that's not the end of the journey, though, because they've made it easy for you to track what happens to your ballot. Again, there'll be another link for this. I'll put that up as well. But here's what it looks like. You have to sign up for an account so you can track your voter records. I did that. This is what the sign-in page looks like. If you don't have the account yet, the sign-up for one is down here. Then you sign in. It gives you all your voter information. It tells you things you already know about yourself. It tells you your registration is active, which is good. It tells you the county you're living in, in case you were confused about that. Um, it tells you what party you're registered in in case you need to change that, um, and your voter ID, which you might need when we have regular elections again for one day. Um, specifically, though, since this entire election is mail-in ballots, this is the one you want to look at to track things. Here it is. So these were automatically filled in. The election and the request things were automatically filled in. Um, this issue date is a little strange. I think it's a generic in the system. What I got when I called the office was that they shipped them out. They sent them out starting on the 24th, I believe. Um, I got mine on a Saturday, which I believe was the 26th. Um, and I dropped it off on the 29th. Um, and then basically it took them two days to basically update this. So for a while it didn't say anything here. Neither of these were filled in. Um, and then very re relatively quickly... They put down a date that they ex got it and that it was received. Now, eventually, this probably will change as they verify the signature on it versus my driver's license or whatever. Um, this should change to accepted. And I don't know whether eventually it gets changed to counted or not, but this is where you would see it if it gets accepted or rejected. If your signature doesn't match, this should change to rejected, at which point you get on the phone and you fix it. All right, now... Final thoughts from Thomas Jefferson. Um, whenever the people are well informed, they can be trusted with their own government. I've had that sentence in my brain for decades. It was one of the first things a civics teacher taught me when I was in middle school. That being a part of government is, part of, is partially being informed, but it's not a mandate. Um, I never, ever, until recently had to consider that that sentence really should also apply to the people who are in the government. I always thought it was just about the voters. It isn't. The people in power need to be informed as well. Otherwise, their decisions are going to be poor ones that cause many bad things, which I'm sure you can imagine, given that we're living through it right now. Um, the next part, whenever things get so far wrong as to attract their notice, they may be able to rely upon to set them to rights. That's the point of voting. You find people who are informed and have good leadership qualities and you vote for them. When the system, the government gets far off, that's when the people need to speak and voting is how you do that. So if you're not already registered, register now. Tonight, as soon as you turn the video off, links are at the bottom of the video. If I knew how, I'd put them in the video. Then get the ballot and vote. Your life literally may depend on it.